last? <laughs> but not least. <laughs> not least. Let me first of all introduce Bessie Howerton, who's with our Legislative Council Office. Bessie has had for a number of years the responsibility of dealing with legislation that is effective to uh, defects. And so many of you know Bessie, so I want her to come in and listen in today because I think it's give her a good background. Bessie, you might say it, just a raise your hand, wave your hand, wave your hand so they don't know you. Uh, <clears throat> we had four areas that we looked at and starting our last meeting, we dealt with data and transparency to be sure again that uh, we are breaking down whatever barriers there may be for the ability of defects and the caseworkers and the courts to get the proper information they need regarding children who are brought into state care. Uh, there's always this problem about sharing of information, so we're examining to be sure that there, there has been a uh, lessening of those uh, problems with uh, between the various agencies. Ashley Wilcott, by the way, is also putting together a policy statement on cross-agency data sharing uh, that will be reviewed as a potential recommendation by the subcommittee. Another area dealing with somewhat the same thing is the education and medical decision-making. Uh, once you have a child brought into care of the state, who has the ultimate responsibility to make decisions regarding education and medical needs? Uh, this becomes a concern certainly to the local boards of education when they try to look to responsible parties for the child. So we want to examine that area of the law. A uh, big area that we're looking at is the governance of the uh, DFAC as well as coming down to your district boards as well as you have local boards. I looked at the law during this uh, last uh, month and really on the local board level, there is really nothing that defines what their responsibility is. The state says it will be a local board made up of a certain number of people <coughs> and, and puts a period after it. So I think there's something that should be uh, clarified as to what we ask of the local board to give them some further statutory responsibility direction, as well as looking at who may be uh, potential types of people to serve on local boards. That brings up the state level. We're looking at the governance of the uh, uh, defects itself and looking also what other states. The uh, governor's office has been very helpful in compiling <coughs> between the various other states in our region uh, what is used as far as the, the uh, communication and direction between the head of uh, defects and the governor's office or the uh, commissioner or secretary is in charge of a particular department. So we're going to examine what might be a better model for the state of Georgia in this area and consider uh, potential recommendations to uh, change that. Um, the last area we're looking at is the child abuse registries. I think it's been discussed the former law that we have was struck down. It was really struck down by the courts because of failure or lack of the proper due process measure. So we're going to see there is a need for this type of registry. The question is, how do we make sure that there is a, a, a standard of due process implemented uh, under law for that reason? Thank you. Any questions on any of the items that we discussed? That is always a concern because, again, the doctor has to have a proper authority, and I think the statutes need to be clear on how that's set up. And uh, through the courts, the juvenile courts, they have jurisdiction, they can assign us to that responsibility. Well, and, you know, the hospitals have to be HIPAA compliant anyways, Bobby. So what, I mean, but we often don't know if there's prior defects involvement with the case. Is that just because the systems aren't talking, or is that because they're not allowed to talk? What What's the legal? I, I think part of it is a data issue and how data is shared amongst um, uh, medical organizations. Um, we are working on that with DCH as a part of the America Group um, Georgia Families 360 program uh, in uh, ensuring through Medicaid, foster families, and the um, adopt, and those that receive adoption assistance. So I think it's partly data, it's partly uh, also practice. We, uh, and I 
I think the health, the healthy medical community will have a great deal of respect for this. Uh, HIPAA came with such strong um, uh, penalties, and if I remember, uh, it's uh, ten thousand dollars per in uh, instance uh, that could be assigned both individually and to uh, organizations. But um, those uh, HIPAA regulations, we train on those very heavily so that we don't violate that or confidentiality statutes. Um, but I think sometimes we don't go to talking about what is permissible sharing of information. So I think part of it is a training and personnel issue. Part of it is that we need to improve the data system to share the information that we contain individually across a number of providers and uh, to uh, better a better picture together for doctors uh, as they look at uh, the health needs of the One last thing I'll mention is there was, and is still, of course, a legislative committee that uh, dealt with the licensing of special child, child welfare providers, and uh, they finished their investigation, their report, and it's to be located on the General Assembly website. Uh, what they were looking at is concerns about multiple agency inspections duplicating what needs to be done and trying to find a way that it can be a one system set up for that part of it. I think that's important because again, just uh, it is a uh, burden on the uh, provider service and have day after day different providers coming in to make the examination. They also talked about the data sharing and uh, that's one of the things that uh, they part as a part in their uh, report on that. Uh, they also considered public scorecards and looking at a way to uh, Determine who is providing good services and bad services, as opposed to just posting up whatever negatives may be on the website. You have a, a full uh, scorecard to be kept on different ones. We talked about the appeal process, which is also again a due process when an agency has a, a challenge based upon uh, their license either being suspended or revoked. To be sure that the process in place uh, meets the appropriate standards of due process. One of the things I saw in that report was that some of um, the groups were advocating for using the national standards for the licensing and, and you know reviews, but that there was concern about who actually provided the oversight at the national level if we were to adopt that model. So are you guys, is that group recommend, issuing a recommendation for how that? As defects. Bobby, you're and, nodding, so. and yes, we have uh, provided uh, feedback to that on uh, several occasions, and um, basically the stance that we've taken is that um, the standards that are put out for accreditation purposes and the monitoring, <coughs> the monitoring that goes along with that is very different than uh, what is uh, done through regulation and monitoring for regulatory purposes. Um, I think it behooves us to look at the best practices that are outlined in those to compare those to uh, the regulatory uh, requirements for providers. I do not think that they can stand as a substitute for the process and the rules that surround that currently. So you think it can be streamlined, but that just to adopt some of that national kind of standard might be the same? Absolutely, and you know, I, I met with providers recently and they um, have had a, a list of concerns, and honestly, I don't know that we have um, effectively listened to them or worked on the issues. Um, some of the concerns that I heard in our last meeting with leaders <coughs> of the providers um, was a list of things that I have heard for the last eight years since I've been here in Georgia. And what I said to them at that point is, uh, we need to select one of these. And so the providers want a way to select an issue that they want to work on initially. And what I want to do by that is to demonstrate to the providers that we do have the capability to take those issues and work on them and uh, come forward with a, something that is um, jointly uh, shared by us and the providers. Um, I think um, they have good reason for having concerns about the way that we've gone about some of the regulation and the contracting that we've done and the amount of oversight that uh, they have to bear. So, they're coming back to me with a prioritized list of things that we need to work on, uh, and we will begin working on those. And I told them that I really want to take one of those uh, and address it, get it out of the way, have it under our belt so that everybody can see that that process can work. Any other questions for Mr. Committee? One, I had Melissa was around the predictive analytics 
Um, how much of the, the, the data input, I mean, is that all done by an outside resource? Because obviously we don't want to add any more paperwork or input stuff onto the plate of the caseworkers. Right. So is that all information yes. done so this by an outside company? Yes, so the actual model piece, this is algorithm and all that, it's built outside and would be the ideal, it would be that would be ultimately something incorporated into the, the tools and infrastructure that PFAX already uses. So that at a very simplified level, the idea would be a call would come into DFACS as the intake process was happening as it routinely does now, and fields were being populated, that it would sort of alert them, hey, this meets the profile of something that warrants additional scrutiny, and you should be have a heightened consciousness about this, and so that the worker would then have a more informed or kind of primed judgment about what they're about to go do. So it wouldn't require that they have different information that they're inputting or additional information in any way duplicate any that would work kind of behind the scenes with the existing process. Well, if there aren't any other questions for our subcommittee leaders, we are going to take a short break um, and uh, the restrooms are, if you go through that door and turn to the right, and then um, we will meet with our subcommittee.